Welcome back, Trailblazer fans, to the weekly recap show for athletics. I'm Dan Wooler here with Assistant Athletic Director, Jeff Player. Jeff, how are you doing? Good, Dan. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you. And so now to begin the recap, we had women's basketball. They had some key mass cat games. One of those games was a tough game against Westfield State. And in that Westfield game, Westfield State using uh, rapid substitutions, five players in, five players out, mm -hmm. five players in. Yeah, they play a, a what's called the Grinnell system, uh, which is becoming a little bit more popular at the Division Three level. Right. Um, their their players rotate in on a, on a one minute basis, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a real uh, change um, for our women uh, to gear up for that type of style Definitely. and pace. And uh, it was very evident. We got off to an exceptionally slow start in the first quarter, and uh, never really recovered, unfortunately. And uh, it led to a fairly uh, lopsided result. Mm -hmm. And then in the second game, the women's team against Salem State, in that game they were leading three quarters and then they dropped it in the fourth. Yeah, you know, they had a, a key matchup with Salem, a team that they uh, narrowly beat uh, earlier this year at home and mm -hmm. uh, on the road. Uh, they were down uh, a couple of starters due to injury, um, or a couple of key players, I should say, Ashley Kloss and Braley Hanlon. And uh, they held the lead for uh, the majority of, uh, of the game. And in the fourth quarter, they just kind of went cold. Right. Um, defensively, they kind of lost their focus a little bit. Uh, uh, they let uh, one of the women from Salem uh, had a pretty t uh, good day uh, shooting the mm -hmm. basketball, scored 28 points. Wow. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, highlighted, the week was highlighted, certainly Karina Matera has continued definitely, uh, definitely. her strong second half of the season. Uh, she averaged 21 points. She had 22 against uh, Westfield, followed that up with 20 uh, against Salem. So mm -hmm. um, all in all, uh, they are still in a uh, pretty good playoff position, uh, but obviously not the results we were looking for. Right, so right now MCLA standing in the MassCAC at 3-6. and six. Uh, Let's take a look at the rest of the MassCAC. Yeah, so you know when you look at the standings, uh, it's been pretty clear cut. Westfield State is uh, at the top of the at the top of the league, and then you, you have uh, Framingham and uh, Bridgewater, right. um, kind of neck and neck there in second place. Um, and then uh, you have three teams basically battling uh, for what appears to be a four, five, six slot, uh, which MCLA is firmly in the middle of that, uh, alongside with Worcester State and Salem. Um, so, you know, with four games, uh, I'm sorry, three games left of the regular season in conference play, mm -hmm. uh, should be a, a very competitive uh, final week and a half. Right. And now we'll move on to the men's side. So for men's basketball last week, they went one for one, one win, one loss, and they won that key win, their first MassCAC win against Westfield State. Let's recap that game. Yeah, it was uh, it was great to finally see them uh, snap an eight-game eight losing streak um, against Westfield State, um, a team that uh, handled MCLA pretty, pretty convincingly early right. in the season. Um, you know, we've been playing much better of late uh, coming into that game. Uh, Khalil Paul had a, a tremendous game, uh, scored 21 points. Uh, Adam Conquest, who's kind of had an up and down uh, right. season, had his uh, probably his best game to date, 13 points, uh, seven rebounds mm -hmm. um, to lead them to a victory. And then, you know, defensively, we, we clamped down on Westfield. We held them to a, a pretty low shooting percentage and uh, did what we had to do to win the game. Mm -hmm. And then the loss on the road to Salem State, really hard fought battle against Salem State, unfortunately lost. Yeah, you just really dug themselves a hole. Salem State came out really hot, shooting the ball really well. They jumped mm -hmm. out to a, you know, a really big first half lead and actually had us doubled up at halftime, 54-27. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, you know, we, we started to play again much better, much looser in the second half. Uh, clamped down a little bit uh, more on the defensive side of things. We actually cut it to nine points right. um, with about five or six minutes left to play. And then, uh, you know, we were obviously forced to uh, try to play some tempo. And uh, unfortunately, we went cold and we didn't score over the final five minutes. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Salem really pulled away at the end uh, right. to earn the victory. But Dakari Hannah Warnham had a really big game against Salem State. Yeah, you know, he, uh, he kind of hit a cold spell earlier in the season. And uh, he bounced back at a double-double effort uh, against mm -hmm. Salem State. So we'll certainly need him down the stretch. Right, and now let's take a look at um, the spring season uh, about to start for the Trailblazers. We got baseball, softball, lacrosse, all beginning practice. Get ready for the season. Yes. So you know the spring programs have started off their uh, practice schedules, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it's great to see them taking advantage of the of the mild winter, uh, getting out on Shoecraft Field, uh, mm -hmm. the lacrosse program, and uh, the other teams are practicing inside. So it's been great to see them off to a start. Right. So now we'll cut to field reporter Jesse Collings, who previewed the women's lacrosse team. Yeah, guys, and I'm here at the MCLA Athletic Complex here in North Adams here with the women's lacrosse team as they're getting ready to start their season. As you can see, there's some snow on the ground behind me, but they've shoveled it off, and they're excited to get ready and get out there and trying to get ready for their season opener. I caught up with MCLA head lacrosse coach Maria Bartini, and she discussed the changes the program had seen from its last season to this one. All right, Coach, um, I understand this is your second season in MassCAC play. Mm -hmm. What makes this season different than the original season? 
Well, I think now we just have a much better sense of uh, what the competition is like, uh, what we really need to be focusing on to get ready for the season and to make some really big strides and improvements from last year. Um, plus, we have most of our players have experience now at this point, whereas last year we had a good chunk of our team were pretty new to lacrosse and hadn't really played any games at the college level. Uh, and now we've got the vast majority of the team with some game experience. So that is a big difference. And I understand last season that you guys kind of scheduled your your uh, non-conference games against teams that were uh, you know still new and still the mm -hmm. programs weren't familiar. Is that yeah. going to be a continued thing this season? Or um, this season we are playing some of the same opponents as last year, so we do have um, some competition against other new programs. We've added a couple of new opponents for when we go down to Florida, um, which will you know step up our level of competition a bit. Um, after this season, you know, we're going to kind of see where where it goes, but it is a good idea for a new program, I think, to make sure that we're facing against competition, facing competition that's pretty comparable to our own. So, and do you have any new players to the program from this season, either we as freshmen or? We do have several new players. We have a couple of students who transferred in. Um, we had a couple of people who um, were already students at MCLA who'd been thinking about playing lacrosse before and decided to come out uh, for the team this year. And we have a couple of freshmen. So um, we have quite a few new faces, um, and that has been really great so far. Mackenzie Cutler described how both the team and individuals have developed over the last season. I'm really excited for our six girls this year. We've developed so much since last year, and I know that we've come together so well as a team, and we're like a big family. All right, and uh, what is something that uh, you see a difference between last season compared to when you were first in Lago season and this season? Um, what was great, because last year, we were, since we were such a new team, by this time, we were working more on stick skills, and we split our team in half, so it was more new players with older players, and now this year, we're like together, so we're working more on just shots and, you know, new stick skills and just plays all together, so we've definitely come a lot farther than last year. I had the chance to catch up with senior Gabby Prada, and she spoke about what she was excited about for the upcoming season. I'm really excited that we got to get on the turf right away. Um, it's a mild winter so far, so hopefully it stays like that so we can get as much turf time as possible. I'm also excited to see what kind of competition we bring to the conference. I think we gave some people a run for their money last year, so um, this year should be interesting. So as you can see, despite the winter weather, these athletes are out here braving the cold as they are excited to start their season coming up in a few weeks. Now back to Dan and Jeff in the studio. Thanks, Jesse. It's great to see the women's lacrosse team able to utilize the turf field out there. And now to recap uh, next week for uh, the men's and women's basketball team, they got doubleheader coming up. Yeah, so look at, looking ahead, we got a, a pair of uh, double dips uh, on tap. Uh, we host uh, Framingham State. Uh, real key game um, on the men's side and on the women's side, really. Mm -hmm. uh, both uh, teams trying to avenge earlier losses uh, to the Rams. Uh, the Framingham State women uh, are near the top of the league, so it'll be a, certainly a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, the men's team um, certainly is uh, kind of vying for playoff positioning with Framingham, so right. uh, certainly a very key matchup there. And then both teams will be on the road uh, at Pittsburgh State um, on Saturday, Saturday. Uh, wrapping up another full week of MASCAC play. Mm -hmm. And then Wednesday night, we've got the Pink Zone games. So that'll uh, uh, the proceeds will benefit local Pop Cares uh, organization for cancer awareness. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of schools uh, nationwide uh, run some uh, cancer awareness events in conjunction with the uh, Women's Basketball Coaches Association. Mm -hmm. um, some have probably heard of the Play for K. You'll see that uh, some of it on TV mm -hmm. uh, with some of the uh, programs uh, wearing pink uniforms and such. And so it's a right. great opportunity for us to try to uh, raise some uh, money for a local charity. And uh, that'll be uh, Wednesday for both games. Uh, the women starting at 5.30, uh, the men at 7.30. Uh, there'll be different uh, donation opportunities. Uh, fans can purchase ribbons uh, and so forth. And it right. uh, should be a great event. That's awesome. Fans, just want to thank you for watching this recap show. And don't forget, you can check out our student athlete profiles on our Facebook page and on the school website. And remember to follow us on all social media as well. For myself, Jeff, and Jesse, just like to thank you for watching.